you get this dance back and forth where you've got to figure out how many pieces do I leave in? Am I on Jason Kronos? Exactly what, I, what do I want to do? And as we come in here into game two, looks like Kevin Jones is up a game. I'm on Jack Kiefer. They both have Kronos on the battlefield. What a Jack match. has a chase on six. So it looks like we are not all in on the combo. Uh, we did bring in some, uh, some sweet cards out of the sideboard and... Kronos is great. Yeah. Uh, Jack is at four life, though, so he he has a bit of a better board, but he is certainly in danger of dying soon. Absolutely. That Kronos can do three damage to Jack if he happens to hit a non-land card on the top of his deck. Uh, for Kevin Jones, uh, if Jace, Jace went down, so technically he would be dead next turn to three from Kronos, one from the Deceiver Exarch yep. if he doesn't have anything going on. But Jace is, like I said, he mi was minus two on the Jace, hit two lands and a Lightning Bolt. Uh, I imagine Kevin split it, Bolt two lands. Jack took the Lightning Bolt. And it looks like we are uh, trying to stay alive at this point. Yeah, so the twin deck, it usually wins with Splinter Twin, and we can see, I think, one or two copies in Kevin Jones's deck, but the other thing that it can do is it can just kind of whittle you down with a little bit of damage from creatures and burn you out, and it seems like that's what both players are going for in this sort of situation. They're going to be jockeying for control over the board, trying to grind each other out while pressuring each other's life total. Yep, Snapcaster Mage and Lightning Bolt, they're quite the duo. They really We've seen are. them a lot in the past. They're going to keep... Keep hanging out we in the future. We are always going to see him. Get used to Oh, wow, this is a pretty young kid. Yeah. Wow, a little prodigy. He's definitely an up-and-comer. Him yeah. and his brother are both very good. How old is his brother? Uh, I believe Jack is the older one. Uh, so I, Dude, so I think his brother is a little, bit, a little bit younger. There's three of them, actually. Oh, jeez. And Chris Anderson has been working with them. Uh, so Really? So they got a good sensei. They definitely do. Mm. Sensei Cranderson. Yeah. I guess we should call him Coach. Coach Cran. I, yeah, I think that's what he prefers, actually. I mean, that's, that's his Twitter handle, I believe. Yeah. So we've got a Snap Spell Snare from Kevin Jones on Jack Kiefer's Snapcaster Mage. So Kevin seems like, even though he doesn't have a Jace, he's in a, a pretty good position. Jack has to play a lot more def defensive because his, his life total is lower, and that makes a lot of his plays uh, forced in a lot of ways. Actually, absolutely, especially since really the only answer to a resolved Kronos in the mirror, outside of just killing your opponent with Splinter Twin fairly soon after, is trying to cryptic command it back to your opponent's hand. Right. And when both players have a bunch of dispels and negates and remands, you know, resolving a four mana spell isn't going to be real easy. Yeah. So we'll see what KFED wants to do. It seems to be like there's a little bit of a counter battle. I bet each player had spent the last couple turns just building up hands for this moment. And now we get to see the fireworks and see how they prioritize various spells and how they want to use their mana. Absolutely. So it looks like we've got, so far on the stack, a Snapcaster Mage from Jack Kiefer. Kevin Jones snapped a Spell Snare. And then Kevin Jones look, looks like he dispelled that Spell Snare. And then we had a couple dispels on each side. So and so now Kevin's Snapcaster resolves and he's going for Electrolyze, just going for a little uh, more damage. Yeah, just do one and one and then he's dead to a Kronos. Yeah, trigger. really good. Uh, so we're going to remand the Electrolyze, cast out of the graveyard. And now remanding a flashback spell is just the best thing to remand because they really do not is. get it back. Correct, it's just exiled and then you get to draw a card. Yeah, and so. who, who doesn't like to draw cards? That's what magic's all about, at least blue decks. All right, but the bad news for Jack is that Kevin does have two attackers in play, and Jack only has one blocker. Now, Kevin can just three up top or try and take care of that Snapcaster Mage with the resolved, or with the revealed Serum Visions off of the Kronos trigger, but it looks like he did just go up top, so now he's dead to both, both attackers are lethal, and any burn spells that Kevin might have in his hand is lethal. And I like that play a lot. I mean, I think you just want to be direct, go for Jack's life total. If you put him at one, no matter what Jack could have to deal with your creatures, he's not going to be able to cast or crack any fetch lands. He has to worry about every random point of damage that can come across the board. Absolutely. So it looks like Kevin's going to cast a Serum Visions here before he does anything. Get a little more information. He is able to stack the top of his deck with the Scry 2 at the end of that spell. So at the very least, uh, if Jack happens to live through this turn and doesn't kill Kevin on his next turn, he's probably dead to that Corona trigger. Yeah, Kevin's Kevin's got some good stuff coming and he knows it. So I think I think uh, Kevin's probably the more experienced player in this matchup. Uh, Jack is pretty young. I know Kevin has been playing this deck for a really long time and he's always been on basically blue, red, mid-range control lead type decks for his entire career. And it's pretty interesting to see a situation like this where Jack has 
slightly more developed board. He's got the Desolate Lighthouse and he has the Jace that Kevin Jones don't have. But Kevin Jones has done an expert job in making sure that this game is about life totals, not a card advantage. Absolutely. So what we see here, a little interesting play from Kevin, is he went to his combat step, declared his attackers, and then before blockers, is using Harvest Pyre on the Snapcaster Mage. Now this is going to make both attackers be lethal, but he did it after he declared attackers. That way Jack's not able to just like play a you know pester pestermite. pestermite in response to the Harvest Pyre, tap down one of his attackers, and then be able to block. So it looks like Kevin Jones is going to take this game uh, that game and the match 2-0 and and going to win in the mirror match here against Jack Kiefer and what, you know, we came in towards the end of it, but it looked like it was quite a game up to that point when both yeah. players have Kronos in play and a Jace. And, and it seems like it was probably quite well fat or well, well fought by Jack. I mean, that game had obviously developed into a late game scenario, and if Jack had slipped up, up Kevin Jones probably would have taken him earlier. But one thing that I would like to note in particular about all the matches we've